Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless all of you. Praise the Lord. Everybody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you for coming on the prayer line. This is the third prayer line for today. The last one for the day will be at 6 o'clock and that will be the breaking of day one. We're doing a three days fasting from 6 to 6, meaning at 6 p.m. you can break and eat. But we are praying four times daily. And so far we've done two and this is the third one. If you're just joining us for the first time, it's okay to join. You can join us and fast and also pray. Or if you don't want to fast, you can just join the prayer line. How is everyone feeling today? Have you guys been reading the scriptures? Are you hungry? Do you feel strengthened? Have you been praying? Are you keeping yourself holy? Are you fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit? Are you meditating? What have you been doing? <clears throat> I'm actually going to read your comments. So what have you been doing today? Praying? or you, I know some of you are at work, but you're trying your best to still come on this. What have you been doing? Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Aha. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. Somebody said they were reading the Bible. Somebody said they've been strengthened, they are good, they are meditating. A lot of people are working, but they're still doing the fasting with us. Hallelujah. Wow, somebody said they are feeling better. Mm -hmm. Somebody is reading the Bible. Somebody is praying and reading the Word of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. During these three days, some of you will have some powerful dreams. It will be more like revelation. God is showing you things, revealing things to you. Or showing you things that are yet to happen. It will be powerful. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. While we were listening to that worship song, God was speaking to me to tell somebody here, (coughs) there's somebody on here, (coughs) that you are so, you're so, like, worried about getting, like, so many followers, so worried about getting to the top, like, you want to be, like, a, what's it called, a woman of God or man of God, and you're so worried about getting to the top fast, fast, fast. You want to like start having so many people. You want to have a lot of people watch you or follow you or whatever. But you are not ready for it. You are not ready for it. But you want this. You, you're just in a haste. You just want to go like boom, boom, boom to the top. And this scripture was coming to me. Second Timothy 2.15 2 Timothy 2.15 he says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Study to show thyself approved. Now, I'm going to read it in another translation. The NLT says, work hard so you can present yourself to God and receive his approval. Be a good worker. One who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly explain the word of truth. This person, God is saying that you need to work hard. You need to study. You need to do more. God will not expose you to that kind of audience when you're not ready because you will be embarrassed. You will not know what to do with them. You will be frustrated. You will be overwhelmed. It will be too much for you to handle. As you are working hard, you are doing what you have to do, preparing yourself. And then God will bless you gradually. But it's not just going to be like boom, boom, boom to the top. There are some little issues that you still need to deal with before you get to the top. I don't know who you are, but you're worried. God is saying stop worrying and keep working on yourself. Okay? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Wow. And then I have a story that I want to share with you guys. 
I kept hearing God sh- does not show favoritism. This is um, Acts chapter 10, verse 34. Acts 10, 34. If you read it in King James Version, it said, And Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But if you read it in NLT, it said, Then Peter replied, I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. It says, I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. And it took me to that chapter for me to read it. Meaning, God doesn't say, oh, like some people, they will be like, they, are, they, they feel like they are the only ones that God will choose, or they're the only one that God loves, or they're the only one that will receive the Holy Ghost, or they're the only one that will receive the kind of anointing. that You know what I mean? God shows no favoritism. You understand? God loves all his children. He can use anyone he pleases. Understand, nobody is like the best to him. Oh, this one is my favorite child, or this one is this. No, 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 no. Hallelujah. So, I'm gonna read this story for you guys because it came to me that I have to read it. Just pay attention, it's interesting. It's an interesting story. Acts chapter 10. Some of you may have read it because I've given you assignment in the past to, to, to read the book of Acts. I love the book of Acts. It says, In Caesarea there lived a Roman army officer named Cornelius, who was a captain of the Italian regiment. He was a devout, God-fearing man, as was everyone in his household. He gave generously to the poor and prayed regularly to God. It's amazing that this part is in this scripture because God was... Reminded me of a video I did about one year ago because Facebook reminded me of it earlier. And while I was sitting here, God was reminding me the title of the video was Be a Giver. I don't know if anyone has seen it. I need to share it. I just saw it early this morning. Be a Giver. And while I was sitting here, God was reminding me of how I gave everything in my closet at my birthday. Like right now, if I take, I'm not doing video, but if I'm doing video the next time, I'll take you guys to my closet. It's swept clean. Nothing is there. And he told me, I say it's amazing this is here because I was still going to mention this before the end. He told me to tell you that is listening to me to be a giver. Stop storing up all these things that you don't need, that you're not going to use. Give it to somebody. Give, give, give. It's not giving them junk, but there's something that you yourself, listening to the sound of my voice, you have not touched it for five years. Some of them still have the tags on it. Some shoes or clothes still, and you know that you won't touch it for the next five years. Give it to somebody. You will feel great. My mother even went to the closet yesterday and she was like, wow, it's really empty. I say, yep, I actually had that closet, another closet, and another one. When the girls came, they emptied it all. And I felt good. One of my followers wore one of the dresses she got from my birthday, and she tagged. She, she was tagging me on the on Facebook. She's in Canada. Oh, if I was doing a video, I will, I will post the outfit so you guys can see it on the video, or maybe I'll post it in the comment section so you guys can see. She looks so beautiful, and that one was brand new. Actually, I've never worn it before. I bought it since was it a few months ago. Because there were some brand new clothes that I put there. Brand new me. There's no way it would have fit me like that. I bought it because I liked it. But you know how we see things we buy, we like. But it's not even our it's, it's not even our size. We're hoping. Because me, you know me, my stomach pops out sometimes. But this lady posted it on Facebook. And she was looking so fine in it. <laughs> she said... This is one of the dresses I inherited from Princess Belemsi's ministry at the Holy Ghost Encounter Houston. In fact, let me post the picture in the comment section of the, um, I'll post it in the comment section of the post so you guys can see how she looks. Beautiful. I was just smiling. I say, hey, so I would have been keeping this closet, uh, this, this thing in my closet while somebody is here. 
looking good in it. I just posted it. You know in the post where I said, join us to pray, right? If you go check that post, I posted three pictures. And she looked good. It's a yellow and black dress. If you go to that post, you'll see it. If you go to that post, you'll see it. The one that says, join us to pray before the audio. Just go there, you see it. It's cute. She looks hot in it. She looks so good. I was like, wow, look at this woman. Looking all fine. It made me so happy seeing her wear it. It fit. This one is like yellow and black. It's a black underneath. Oh, some of you have started liking it, so you've seen it. Okay, good. The ones that I've seen it, do you see how beautiful she is? There's a black long dress in it. And there's, I think some of you are not seeing it. Let me, let me see if I can post it. Um, comments for, you see it later. Or let me post it underneath this video. I saw it. I was so happy. <laughs> she looks so pretty in it. It felt so good. I said, wow, these people are looking cute in these things that they got from me. And I was happy that I gave because me, I never would have worn it. I'm posting it in the comment section of this audio so you guys can see it. I posted three pictures. If you come out of the audio and click comments, maybe you'll see it. Beautiful lady. Beautiful. <laughs> Fine. Uh -huh. A lot of you have seen it. Okay, good. A lot of you are commenting on it. Good, good. Well, you see how cute it is. I've never worn it. I had the tag. I actually had two of it. One was red and black. One was yellow and black. I remember when she was speaking it, I said, oh, it's going to tight your belly a little bit, but it will fit you. It looks like the one you're wearing now. And she picked it. And yesterday she posted it. She went out with it. She tagged me. One of the dresses I inherited. I look, I say, child, look at this fine woman. <laughs> it's cute. It's brand new. I never wore it. Never. But it looked so good on her. I was full of smiles. She came all the way from Canada to the program. And it was good that I could give something. What am I... See, I'm not saying all these things for bragging sake. It's just to show you guys that I practice what I preach. Be a giver. It's not every time you say, Oh, I don't have money. I can't give. You have something else that you can give. You have a lot of shoes. You have a lot of clothes. You have a lot of purses. What if you die today? Who's going to take all these things in your closet? These are some, there are some, some of you have like three closets in your house. You only enter one. The other two closet is excess closet. You don't even go into those closets. <laughs> You've not even been there in a while. There are people maybe on your birthday. When your friends are gathered, say, hey, I know it's my birthday, but I want to give you guys something. There's somebody in the midst that will take it. Cover it to the blood of Jesus. Anyone that wants to do it, you evil with it, they will die. Simple and short. Because some people are evil. But give from your heart and they'll be like, wow. Some of them will not even be ashamed. They'll pick something out of it. And you know that you're not going to wear these things. You're not going to, or even go and give it to, what's it called, Salvation Army or one of those people. But don't just keep your house all crowded with things that you don't use anymore. Yes. Give so that there will be room in your house. You enter your closet, there's space. Now you can now buy things that will actually fit you. Some of you have things in your closet that are not even your size anymore. You were skinny then and you were st you're still hoping. You're like, well, I will lose weight. Don't worry. I will lose weight. I will lose weight. I will lose weight. I will lose it, my dear. You are not losing weight. Give it away and go and buy your new size. You understand? Stop letting the devil deceive you. Yeah, some of you say, well, this is my designer shoes, my designer purses. Well, why would I give anybody? But you are not using it. It's been years before you even use it. Give it up to somebody. 
that doesn't have that needs it, that will cherish it, that will go on their knees and say, thank you, Jesus, for this woman. Thank you, Jesus, for this man. I really needed his shoe. I really needed this dress. I really needed this. Oh, I needed this oh, this car. I've been walking. I've been taking the bus. I've, thank you, God, for this woman, for blessing me with this car. Oh, Father, bless this one. Bless her. May she never lack in the name of Jesus. Yes, you may have a car that you have not driven for almost a year. It's old, yeah, but it still drives. There's somebody that you see them always walking to their job or walking to school or walking somewhere to church. Give the car to the person. It's just parked in your parking lot. You're not driving it. Do you know when you give, God will bless you with a better car, newer car, And that person will go to God in prayer and bless you and tell God to bless you for this gift that you've given. I say it's amazing that this thing came up, that this man is a giver. Because God brought it up and I was going to discuss it with you guys before I left. But God has a way of bringing something back. Give. Like me these days when I'm home, like right now, I'm wearing the white long dress. I don't even dress up in the house. I'm very simple. The other dresses I have is when I go preach. Like now, next, uh, what's it called? Next month, I'll be traveling a lot because of the deliverance and healing I'll be doing everywhere. So yes, I'll be wearing those dresses. And as I remove them, somebody is already requesting for my dress in New York. What's her name? Yvette. She messaged me two days ago. She said, woman of God, my life has changed. I've been following you. Please, I want to put in my request for the dress in New York. I say, ha, I have not even come to New York to preach. Somebody is already requesting the dress. But most of the time when I finish preaching, the dresses, they go. I even like it like that. Because most likely I won't even wear it again. So it's good that I'm able to give it to somebody instead of using it to crowd up my closet. There's some of you, you don't like repeating clothes. Give it out. That's right. I'm using clothes as an example, but there's more. You understand? There's more. And you will be blessed. One day God was teaching me stuff of how those that give, one of the reasons why they will never lack Let's say like at my event, I gave a lot of lady stuff. Besides the long, long dresses that every woman had on Sunday, right? There were still people that had wigs, shoes, bags, dresses, and all that. Let's say there were like 400 ladies or 500, okay? And they all went to their room smiling that they got something from the woman of God. And they, before they sleep, they now put me in their prayer and say, Father, bless this woman of God. She's so generous. Please bless her. May she never lack. So that night, let's assume all 500 women pray and they call my name in their prayer. Hey, God says that some of these people calling my name to pray, they've never prayed before, but because they are so happy that night because they were blessed, they will come to him and pray because of the gift I gave them. He said, there is no way that I would lack because he will hear Belema's name. Father, bless Belema. He will look at Belema again. He would hear Belema's name in the other house, in another country. Father, please bless Belema. Belema again. And he will see one of his daughters that have not prayed for three days and suddenly she's calling Belema's name in a prayer. Ah, Belema made this one pray to me today. Ah, Belema, this Belema, angel, Go bless Belema. Go bless Belema. Go bless Belema. Last night. Go bless Belema. Go and bless Belema. There's no way Belema would lack. Do you see where I'm coming from? We're not doing it for show. We are doing it because we want to be like Jesus. Wow, the lady will be surprised I even shared that picture. I'm seeing all your comments. You guys are saying, wow, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> She'll be surprised I even talked about her. I saw it yesterday. She didn't know I was going to talk about it today. <laughs> she looks so cute. Hallelujah. So be a giver. Don't be stingy. Even money, if you can help, you help. And try also be to be led when you are giving. 
Sometimes there are some givings that even the Spirit of God will frown. He will tell you not to do it. But there are most times He will lead you to help. He will be leading you to give. He will be leading you to give. Even if you only have 100 bucks and somebody needs $10, don't think about how you will survive with $90. What's the difference? It's just $10. Give them the $10. It could also be a test. Yeah. Do you know we have so many angels coming out in this world testing you guys and you don't even know? <laughs> and these angels, people are always thinking angels will come in, in white wings Looking all white in white wings and ah, that's an angel. No, no, they come in disguise. That's why you have to be nice to people. Sometimes you may be entertaining angels and you don't even know. They come in disguise. If anything, let me tell you, angels come looking broke. Looking like annoying, like people that you will want to snub, you want to shun off. They come in the lowest level of people that you can ever think of. Because God wants to see how humble you are. And if you really care about people or if you do feel like, oh, this one, I'm beyond this one. What is this one? Mm, get this one out of me. How you treat people. Are you? Because, see, people will always want to act nice around rich people, around good looking people, around. So angels don't come good looking and rich. I'm not saying they cannot. They may, but most of the time. They come the way that most people will ignore them. Yeah. Because God knows our eyes are always on the flashy things. Or if somebody's coming with a big car, we want to already respect them. Or we want to already treat them right because they're looking flashy. So they will come in a way that you may ignore them if you don't really pay attention. That's right. So be careful how you treat people. So that way, you don't go and mistreat an angel that God sends to test you. Thank you, Jesus. So let's continue reading. We're talking about this man in the book of Acts, Cornelius. I'll start again, Acts chapter 10. It says, in Caesarea, there lived a Roman, of, a Roman army officer named Cornelius, who was a captain of the Italian regiment. He was a devout, God-fearing man, as was everyone in his household, he, was, he gave generously to the poor and he prayed regularly to God. He gave generously to the poor and he prayed regularly to God. One afternoon about three o'clock, he had a vision in which he saw an angel of God coming toward him. Cornelius, the angel said, how many of you want to have an, a vision where an angel of God will come towards you? Type me and I'll pray for you and it will happen. How many of you want to have a vision where an angel of God will come towards you? Not just this three days. You want to have it steadily, not once, forever. No, you want to have it all the time. Some of you do have those visions. Some of you have those dreams, but you don't even know those, those people are angels. Sometimes you say, woman of God, I saw you in my dream. Woman of God, I saw Pastor Isaac. I saw Bishop. Oh, that was an angel that came to you. <laughs> it was not me because I was sleeping or I was busy doing something else. All right, just put your right hand on your forehead so that you also have your own encounter. Some of you will have it within these three days. And some of you will have it after the three days or more and more and more. Father Lord, as I'm reading this scripture, it says Cornelius saw an angel in a vision that came towards him and also had a message for him. Those that are connected to this prayer, let them have their own encounter with angels in the name of Jesus. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Or oh, receive an angelic visitation, angelic encounter, ASAP, by the power of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. Yes, they say it is done. From now, from now, from now to the next three days, I hear it so clearly. An angel of the Lord will visit you. In Jesus' name. And you will remember the dream or the vision, and you will come and you will testify. Most times they come in a 
face of the man of God or woman of God you follow. Because sometimes when they come in a strange face, you may start to bind them. You say, who are you? Leave me alone. I bind you in the name of Jesus. You start binding God. <laughs> You'll be binding Jesus. Because <laughs> some of you, if you see a face you are not familiar with, you even call him spirit husband. <laughs> they don't always come in white though. Even in your dream, angels don't always come in white. They may dress like me now. You may you see that picture where I had the angel standing behind me. That blue dress picture. So many of my followers have had dreams of me coming in that blue dress, coming to pray for them, coming to deliver them, coming to give them a message. It's because God knows that they believe that He sent me. God knows that they love that picture. So when He sent His angel, they came looking like that. So they were responsive. They were happy to have seen me. And whatever happened in the dream, they received it. That was an angel that visited. Okay? But if they will all send you one face of one woman or one man, who are you? Who are you? Holy Ghost, fire all over your body. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Oh my God. Some people have sent me dreams. They will say, woman of God, you came to my dream and you put hand on my stomach and you said, I am healed. I started to vomit. By the time I woke up, woman of God, my stomach pain that I've been having for three years, it stopped. I say, wow, Jesus healed you. Or an angel of the Lord came and healed you. They say, really? I say, yeah. They just use my face because they know you see me as a woman of God. They say, oh my God, until today they are healed. A woman of God, you came to my dream and you gave me a message. You said that I will get a job in two weeks. And I got a job in two weeks. It was an angel. Yeah. I'm just preparing you so when it happens, you will know. Somebody say, I always see you. Uh -huh. That means you're always having angelic encounter. When you have those dreams... When you wake up, write down what instruction they gave you or write down what... Sometimes they may not come in our faces. Like one of my followers was telling me yesterday, she had a dream if some days ago and a man came in the dream and told her that she should go and tell people to repent. Like she, she should not just go and be prophesying and doing healing and all that she should go and focus on repentance messages and that she should go and tell people so they can be saved that he's coming soon and when she woke up she knew that that was jesus so sometimes it may not be in our faces it could be jesus himself so you will receive your own encounter in jesus name amen but when you see them give you instructions Wake up and write it down. Otherwise, you will forget it. You think you'll remember it, but you won't remember it. You will forget it. Write it down. It's very important. Sometimes when they heal you in the dream and you wake up and you are not healed, it doesn't mean that the healing will not take place. It's just God showing you that soon you will be healed. Very soon. Oh, there was one day I was in the dream and one pastor that I admire, he came into my dream and he, he put his two finger, touched my eyes, and suddenly I could see, my God, I could see like 10 hours from where I was. I saw the sign on the street. I could read clearly. I saw in HD quality. My God, my eyes were good and I could see. I said, oh my God, I can see clearly. I can see. I was so happy when I woke up from sleep. I jumped up from the bed, turned on the TV. And I couldn't see the way I saw in the dream. But I was still rejoicing. I said, Father, I know you will heal me. You have just showed me that my eyes will be back to where it's supposed to be. It's timing. I should not wake up saying, oh, what kind of dream is this? I thought I could see. And I'm still, because me, I can only see from one eye. I told you guys my experience when I was married. I had retinal detachment on one eye. So it's only one eye. But I'm not using that to say, oh, I'm this whatever, whatever, whatever. I'm disfigured. Or, no, no, no. I'm still doing what I have to do. But in that dream, an angel coming in the face of that man of God put his two fingers on my eye. And I could see clearly. When I told my bishop the dream, he said, soon God will heal your eyes. 
the same way you saw it in a dream. I say, yes, I believe, I believe. So sometimes you may have received your healing in a dream, but in physical, it has not manifested. It doesn't mean that you should be discouraged. It doesn't mean that you should say, oh, I thought it was done. Why am I not seeing it? Just believe that because he has showed it to you, very soon it will happen. Because there's somebody here, you saw you had deliverance in your dream and suddenly you woke up and you still have that issue. You are not delivered and you are feeling depressed. You are feeling, God is just showing you that you are about to be delivered. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. So it says, one afternoon, about three o'clock, he had a vision in which he saw an angel of God Coming toward him, Cornelius, the angel said. Cornelius stared at him in terror. What is it, sir? He asked the angel. And the angel replied, Your prayers and gifts to the poor have been received by God as an offering. Hey, yeah, yeah. He said, Your prayers and gifts to the poor have been received by God as an offering. Do you know it pleases God when we give to the poor? Eh? Let me read it in King James. He says, and, he, and, he, and when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is, what is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine arms are come up for a memorial before God. So the good deeds that you do, they are coming to God as an offering. As a sacrificial offering. You're not doing it because of those people. You're doing it to please God. And this man, because they say he was always helping the poor. And he prayed a lot. The angel is telling him, your prayers and gifts to the poor have been received by God as an offering. He said, now, send some men to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter. He is staying with Simon a tana who lives near the seashore. Do you see how the angel is giving him instructions? That's why I say when you wake up, you write down your dream so you can follow the instruction that was given. Some of you ignore those things. You say, well, it was just a dream. <coughs> it was just a dream. Maybe it was just a dream. It didn't mean anything. No, it's not just a dream. Instructions were given. Follow the instruction. There are times in my dream I will see that I need to sow a seed. And I will even hear the amount once I wake up. I don't even waste time. That same day, boom, 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 I sow that seed. <coughs> Sometimes, there was one time I had, in a dream, I saw that I gave my sister $5,000. I wrapped it in a bag and I put it under my pillow. Right? And in the dream, when she came, I said, have you collected the money I gave you? She said, what money? I said, I gave you 5000 She said, no, I didn't get it. I said, oh, oh, wait, let me check. It's under the pillow. And I'll give it to her, right? 5000 I didn't even think about it. When I woke up, it was God himself that reminded me. He said, have you given her the money? I said, what money? He said, the one that I showed you in the dream. So my sister never asked me for money. My younger sister, she's working hard and doing her thing. So I texted her. I said, hey, how are you? She said, fine. I said, how is school? She said, good. Because she's going to, she's going to school for um, nursing. I said, okay. Um, how are your classes? She said, fine. I said, did you get help this semester? She said, no, she's paying from out of her pocket. I said, um, okay, so how are you doing it? She said, oh, she has a payment plan. My sister will never ask me for help. She, she always wants to do things herself. Even if she's broke, she will never ask. So I was like, um, so what kind of instrument? She said they broke it into three parts. But I know what I saw in the dream. It was an instruction to a point that God even reminded me. I said, okay, so total, what's your school fees for this um, semester? She said 4890 something, almost 5000 Immediately, I started having chills all over my body because in the dream, I saw $5,000. <laughs> she said $4,809, almost, almost $5,000. I said, um, 
God wants me to give you this money. She said, no, 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 I don't want it. It's okay, I'll pay it. I said, no, it's okay, I'm sending it to you right now. She was surprised. She didn't ask me for it. I was told in the dream to give it to her. It was $100 extra from what she needed. Maybe she has prayed and God has seen that she's really trying. She didn't see the, the way God works with his children. Eh? If you live right and you you have a good relationship with him, he will place it in the heart of somebody to help you. You won't even need to ask. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would not even need to beg. The person will wake up. I said, he asked me. He said, have you given her the money? I said, what money? He said, the one I showed you in the dream. I called her. I was asking questions and asking questions. When she told me the amount, I started having chills in my body. I'm like, whoa. It was, it was an instruction. And I obeyed. This was not about sister or brother. It could have been anybody else. I've given so many people money as by instructions from God. I'm just using that as an example of how powerful dreams are. Sometimes you would think it's just a dream. I just had a dream. It's not that important. No, God speaks to us through dreams. Uh -huh. Somebody, tell me, say, just like you bless me too. God bless you, sweetie. I didn't even know you were going to say this. Tell me, own, I was dreaming. And I saw that, I saw that I gave her money in the dream. Like she came into my fellowship, there were other ladies, and I gave her money. So when I woke up, God reminded me, he said, have you given her the money? I said, who? And now message, I said, how are you? She said, fine. I said, how are your finances? She said, I, it's, it's just, I said, I saw you in my dream and I was giving you money. She said, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That yes, she really has been praying to God for money. I said, okay, I'm sending you money. I sent her $1,000. She was shocked. I saw her clearly. I even called her name. I even... So me, my dreams, I don't play with them. I always obey. So from today, I didn't even know you were on here, sweetie. God bless you. At least I'm talking about somebody else and somebody said just like me too. So I had to mention her own case. Dreams are powerful. Once you wake up, you fulfill that thing that God told you to do in the dream. Because sometimes holding back from fulfilling it could be holding you back from moving forward. There could be a door that needs to be opened. And that thing that needs to be done has to be done ASAP for that door to be open. God will tell you to give because he knows you have it. Don't be stingy. Oh God, with this giving thing, please don't be stingy. The only reason he said do it is because he knows you have it. He even provides it for you. He provides the sacrifice. Yeah. Sometimes you may not have it when you woke up, but boom, that day somebody will bless you with exactly that amount. God himself is providing it for you to obey and do that thing. But some people will be like, oh, I need this money. Let me pay my rent. You know that that was not for your rent. That was for you to be able to do that thing that he's telling you to do. Don't be greedy. Obey. Sometimes he will say, sow a seed. And you know you don't have that much in your account. But once you check your amount, account is like somebody deposited money, exactly that amount. Now the devil will say, why do you want to give that money? You know you need it more than anybody else. Use it to pay your phone bill. No. God provided it at the right time. And he's seeing if you will obey and give it out. Do it. Don't let the devil deceive you. See, eh? This thing called money, eh? Don't go and fight anyone because of money. Don't hate anyone because of money. Don't go and be arrogant because of money. Because you see this money, it does not last. You may have 10000 now and you would think that, oh, I have arrived. I have $10,000. I am a rich woman. I can do whatever I want, my dear. In less than two weeks, 
that 10,000 has reduced to 1,000. And even you, you are wondering, ah, uh-uh. ah. <laughs> This money is going fast, though. <laughs> money is always going fast. By the time you pay car, you pay house rent, you pay this, you do this, your children's school fees, you do that. The money you were bragging about, having attitude, insulting people, it don't reduce finish. So don't ever fight someone because of it. It does not last. As it's coming like that, and your spending is reducing. But when you are a giver, you will never lack. I'm telling you, be careful. Don't be holding on too tight to it. If you hold on too tight, you will lose it. Thank you, Jesus. It says, and the angel replied, your prayers and gifts to the poor have been received by God as an offering. Now send some men to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter. He is staying with Simon, a tenor who lives near the seashore. As soon as the angel was gone, Cornelius called two of his household servants as soon as the angel was gone. Meaning as soon as he got up from the dream or the vision, he called two of his household immediately. He quickly reacted. He did not wait till next week. He called two of his household servants and a devout soldier, one of his personal attendants. He told them what had happened and sent them off to Joppa. The guy acted immediately. The next day, as Cornelius' messenger were nearing the town, Peter went up on the flat roof to pray. It was about noon and he was hungry. But while a meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw the sky open and something like a large sheet was let down by its four corners. In the sheet were all sorts of animals, reptiles and birds. Then a voice said unto him, get up, Peter, kill and eat. No, Lord, Peter declared. I have never eaten anything that our Jewish laws have declared impure and unclean. But the voice spoke again, do not call something unclean if God has made it clean. The same vision was repeated three times. Hey! Then the sheet was suddenly pulled up to heaven. Peter was very perplexed. What could this vision mean? You know some of you have had visions or dreams and you don't understand the meaning. Sometimes when we see dreams or when we have visions... They are not always straightforward for you to understand it. Sometimes somebody has to interpret it. Sometimes the Holy Spirit himself will help you interpret it. Or sometimes it will just unfold on its own. So he did not understand what he was seeing. Do you know I've had some people that have helped them. And they will say, yes, last night I had a dream. And God told me that today my destined helper will locate me. Or today... He will give me money for my rent. Or today he will help me. So as you are doing this for me, woman of God, I'm not surprised because God told me that today I will receive help. So sometimes and when God shows you a dream, he's also showing the other person something. Do you understand what I mean? So in this case, when the angel appeared to Cornelius, Peter also had a vision. Although he did not understand his vision. He said Peter was very perplexed. What could the vision mean? Just then, the man sent by Cornelius found Simon's house. Standing outside the gate, they asked if a man named Simon Peter was staying there. Meanwhile, as Peter was puzzling over the vision, the Holy Spirit said to him, Three men have come looking for you. Get up. Go upstairs. Go downstairs, I'm sorry. And go with them without hesitation. Don't worry, for I have sent them. How many of you want to hear the Holy Spirit speak to you clearly the way he just spoke to Peter? It says, the Holy Spirit said to him, three men have come looking for you. See, the Holy Spirit said to him, This Holy Spirit that you guys have and you think is only for speaking in tongues. The same Holy Spirit said to him, three men 
have come looking for you. Get up, go downstairs, and go with them without hesitation. Don't worry, for I have sent them. Oh, <laughs> he woke up still trying to figure out this vision. And suddenly the Holy Spirit is being so clear. It may not have been a sound like go there. It, it could have just been something that was just downloaded to him. It could have just been. Or knowing that there are three people about there's a way that God downloads this thing to us. It's just like when you say, Woman of God, the Holy Spirit is leading me to, to sow three hundred dollars. How did you hear it? A lot of you have messaged me like that. The Holy Spirit said I should start paying my tithe here. How did he say it to you? Sometimes you can't even explain it, you just know it. You just know that you have to do this here, right? There's just this knowing. <laughs> Right? You just know. Woman of God, the Holy Spirit wants me to, to, to support the program for Minnesota. Or woman of God, the Holy Spirit wants me to move to Houston. How did you know that he wants you to move? Right? A lot of you come to me telling me, Holy Spirit said this. Holy Spirit said that. Meaning you can hear. But it's probably not sounding like, move to Minnesota. Move to Houston. You're not hearing like a voice that is sounding like the voice that I'm using now, right? But you just know it. There's just a leading. You just know. You just know it. Sometimes you could actually hear it. There are most times that I hear. A lot of times I hear my name. And he pronounces it so well. So now I want to pray for you. For those of you that say you want to clearly hear the same way Peter heard the Spirit of God describe the people that are coming to meet him and what he has to do. Put your right hand on your forehead. Father, as we are reading this scripture and these people are connecting, may they begin to hear clearly from the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus. You that have your right hand on your forehead from today, you will begin to hear and understand what the Spirit of God is leading you or telling you to do in the name of Jesus. You will understand. You will hear clearly. Not just the Spirit of God. Even when God himself is speaking to you, when Jesus is speaking to you, you will hear clearly. You will understand in the name of Jesus. I command your ears to open now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Somebody, your ear will just make a pop sound. Your right ear is like pop, like when water is popping and coming out. And you will begin to hear clearly. That's right. You will not be guessing, oh, maybe this is what God wants me to do. No, no, no. You will hear clearly. Just believe. See, all we do, you guys are just being blessed in this fast. As I'm blessing you, just be believing it. And just allow God do his thing. And you will see. You will start to notice changes in your life. Thank you, Jesus. He said, meanwhile, as Peter was puzzling over the vision, the Holy Spirit said to him, three men have come looking for you. Get up, go downstairs, and go with them without hesitation. Do not hesitate. Don't worry, for I have sent them. As I'm reading the scripture, God is telling me that you guys are enjoying this message. How many of you are enjoying it? How many of you are understanding what is happening here? Because you know some of you don't like listening to the word of God, but God is telling me, he said they are enjoying the message. So how many of you are enjoying it? I see a lot of me, 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 good, good. And sometimes you may have read it before, but today because... Yeah, I'm preaching it. It's like you're seeing it in a different way. You could read the same scripture over and over and over. And you will be getting different, different revelation from it. It will be like you've never read it. It will just sound so new again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Somebody say me. God bless you. Hallelujah. So he said, so Peter went down and said, I am the man you are looking for. Why have you come? They said, we were sent by Cornelius, a Roman officer. He is a devout and God-fearing man, well respected by all the Jews. 
A holy angel instructed him to summon you to his house so that he can hear your message. So Peter invited the men to stay for the night. The next day he went with them, accompanied by some of the brothers from Joppa. They arrived in Caesarea the following day. Cornelius was waiting for them and had called together his relatives and close friends. As Peter entered his house, Cornelius fell at his feet and worshipped him. Did you see how this connection between them happened in her, through, like through a dream, through a vision? Hey. Specially connected by God himself. He sent an angel. See, these two men did not know each other before. Nobody referred them. It was God himself that connected these two men through a vision, through a dream. <laughs> hey! Hey! There was a time God was telling me, was it two weeks ago? He said, see, you can never be poor. You will never be poor. That even if they took everything I have given you away from you, I have given you the power to make wealth. I will lay it in the heart of somebody, maybe a president or somebody that is sick and need healing. I will put your name in his mouth. He will look for you and you will lay hands on him and you will heal him and he will bless you with more than anybody has taken from me. I was like, wow. I even said that on the video, right? He said, I will put your name in his mouth. And he will be restless until he finds you. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, God is too much. I say, if you really trust in God, you believe in how God works, like his power. You will never be worried. God will put your name in the mouth, in the heart of somebody. And that person will keep thinking of you. Somebody told me that there was a day somebody knocked on her door. And said, are you this woman? This is a woman of God. <clears throat> she said, yes. She said, God said I should come and anoint you. And she's been praying to God. That she wants anointing. She needs to be anointed. A powerful woman of God knocked on her door. Is this you? She said, yes. She gave her a full name. Say, God gave me your address and your name. And he said, she come and anoint you. The woman entered, prayed for her, laid hands on her. Electric feeling all over her body. From that day, that woman, today, that woman is a powerful woman of God. She stayed in her house and prayed. And said, Lord, I need that anointing. Use me as you please. A powerful woman of God that will not probably just come to anybody's house came to her doorstep. Said, is this you? God gave me your address and your name. And he said, I should come and anoint you. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, hey, hey. When she was telling me I was having chills all over my body. She said, that's how she became anointed. That's how she started to do the work of God. It came to her doorstep. The woman had her address. God revealed it to her, gave her the woman's address, gave her a full name. My God. Hey! <laughs> when you hear this kind of story there, <laughs> oh my God. You don't ever want to doubt God. You just want to believe in him totally. Some of you have had bills that you thought was going to embarrass you. But when you call the company to pay the bill, they said, you have a zero balance, ma'am. <laughs> Somebody said, just like God gave Bishop your name. That's right. Tell me, you're so sweet. You remember all this thing. Bishop had that encounter too. He said he was sleeping or so. God gave him my name. Told him to look for me and bring his daughter to him. He typed my name and he was like, is this the one? He said, yes, that's her. I have had somebody. She told me she called. Was it for a student loan or whatever? That was $5,000. They say, you have paid it off. You don't have any bill. She said, are you sure? 
And me, I was like, why are you asking if they are sure? Me, they tell me I paid off then, so be it. It's paid off. I ain't asking you nothing. <laughs> Just send me the receipt. <laughs> they say it's been paid off. Hey! They say, ma'am, you have a zero balance. $5,000 worth of tuition. Student loan. Paid off. Our father is too powerful. People just worry and worry. And they don't even know how powerful God is. They underestimate him. They just think these things are impossible. Who told you it's impossible? You are suffering because you lack faith. You are suffering because you don't believe that God can help you. But if you believe that God can take care of you, you will never suffer. Every day you wait. Every day you wake up, you will not wake up with worries. Because you know that it will take care of you. You will wake up with praise and worship. Because you know that he will take care of you today. But some of you, you wake up worrying, worrying, worrying. You don't know how powerful he is. Somebody could have a dream. And he will tell them your name. Give them your address. And your life will change in one day. Uh. <laughs> I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. You have to trust in Him. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. Even the Bible says, it says, in all your ways, acknowledge Him. Trust Him with all your heart. Even when they have given you a negative report. Even when they are about to kick you out of that place. Oh, you have to trust in God. You have to believe that God has a plan for you. <laughs> That's why I like those guys. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were going to throw them in that furnace. That fiery furnace. Because they refused to bow to that, that, that thing that they carved and said they should worship it. They said, no, we will not bow. Our God will save us. And see, even if he doesn't save us, we still will not bow. Uh, they were sure that God was going to come through for them. And when they put them in that place. He saved them. Just that they believed. We need faith like that. Yes. We need faith like that. We need to believe in God like that. Some of you put your faith in man. You put your faith, oh, my uncle is the only one that can help me, but he is not answering my call. Oh, I'm finished. My life is over. This my uncle is the only one that has been helping me. Is your uncle God? You're the only one that can help me. Woman of God, you're the only one. Who told you I'm the only one? God is the only one that can help you. That's right. Oh, my God. I was just so deep in the spirit now. My God. I need to go find... Uh, I need to go find something to clean my face. Let me play this song while you guys are waiting for me. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus.
Wow. God bless all of you. I'm back. <laughs> you know when you're preaching and you just get to another place, start to cry. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. That's right. I believe that some of you now know that you have to trust in God more than anything. Believe in Him. Don't just see Him as God that is so far away. But see him as God that can take care of you. Your very, like, everyday needs can can do more than what you can ever imagine. Can change your life. It says, oh my God. <sighs> All right. I was reading Acts chapter 10. And I stopped at verse 24. It said, they arrived in Caesarea the following day. Cornelius was waiting for them. And called together his relatives and close friends. God bless me. Are you guys, God bless you. Are you guys following me? I hope you guys are following me. Eh? As Peter entered his home, Cornelius fell at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter pulled him up and said, Stand up. I am a human being just like you. Don't worship me. I'm a human being just like you. So they talked together and went inside where many others were assembled. Peter told them, he said, you know, it is against our laws for a Jewish man to enter a Gentile home like this or to associate with you. But God has shown me that I should no longer think of anyone as impure or unclean. So I came without objection as soon as I was sent for. Now tell me why you sent for me. So now he understands what the dream is. The dream where he saw different kind of animals. And he's, and God was telling him, kill and eat. He said, no, I can't eat what some of these animals are not clean. They're not, they are, they are not pure. And he said, why are you calling something unclean? Something that I have called clean. So now he understands that the animals that he saw, God was referring to people that stop, stop um, being, um, what's it called? Is it um, racist? I mean, well, stop saying, no, this one, I can't talk to this one. When God has said that you should go and talk to that one. You understand what I mean? So he, now he understands the dream. That sometimes you may not understand the dream when you wake up. But as things start to happen, you begin to understand. Now, guess what? In that dream, it did not talk about a man. 
It talked about animals. So there are sometimes you see dreams. That's why Bishop, when Bishop is interpreting dreams for people, it will say just because you saw, um, maybe you you saw, um, let's say you saw like a, an, an animal or you saw something. It doesn't mean it means the same thing as the other person that saw an animal. Yours may mean something different. You understand? Yours may mean something different. The other one's dream too may also mean something different. It may not all mean the same thing. Some people just always assume that anytime they see a dream like this, it has to be this one. This is what it means. No, everybody's dream might be something totally different. God is probably trying to communicate something different to this one and God is probably trying to communicate something different with this one. So just because me and you saw the same kind of animal in our dream, it does not mean that our dreams are exactly the same. You understand what I'm saying? Uh huh. So it says, but God has shown me that I should no longer think of anyone as impure or unclean. So I came without objection as soon as I was sent for. Now tell me why you sent for me. Cornelius replied, Four days ago, I was praying in my house about this same time, three o'clock in the afternoon. Suddenly, a man in dazzling clothes was standing in front of me. He told me, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard and your gifts to the poor have been noticed by God. Now send messenger to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter. He is staying in the home of Simon, a tanner who lives near the seashore. So I sent for you at once. And it was good of you to come. Now we are all here waiting before God to hear the message the Lord has given you. Then verse 34 is the verse that I heard before this prayer line. Then Peter replied, I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. In every nation, he accepts those who fear him and do what is right. So even though it's against whatever, whatever for us to communicate with you guys like this, our father in heaven does not show favoritism. Our Father in heaven is okay with me and you talking. And even if you, your people are, a lot of your people are serving other gods, but you decide not to serve that God, and you say you want to serve God in heaven, even in the midst of all those people, God will still love you, will still walk through you. So you could be in a country where they all have one kind of God that they serve, and you are one person that said, nope, I'm never going to serve that God. I will make sure I follow Jesus. Do you know that you will still receive you will still have that relationship with God despite the fact that everybody else in that country is serving another God. He will not say, well, your people will all perish, including you, because they are all serving this, but you are not the one serving it. You are different from them. He's not going to group you with all of them and say, well, because they are all serving it, you too, you will perish. No. No, it says in every nation, he accepts those who fear him and do what is right. So your whole family may be a different religion or whatever, and you, you choose to serve God. He says, God will accept you. Your family background would not hinder anything. He will accept you. He said, this is the message of good news for the people of Israel, that there is, there is peace with God through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after John began preaching his message of baptism. And you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we apostles are witnesses of all he did throughout Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a cross. This man did not even prepare a message. The moment he came to this man's house and the man said, we are all waiting for the message that God has given you to give us. Suddenly he opened his mouth and see how he's flowing like he had something planned. Hey, he was just preaching and flowing. 
that's the work of the Holy Spirit. I was talking about that earlier today at the, uh, I think, 6 a.m. prayer line. That you shouldn't think of what to say. The Spirit of God will teach you what to say at that exact time. How many of you remember me saying that? And that's exactly what's happening to this man. It says that we apostles are witnesses of all he did throughout Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a cross. But God raised him to life on the third day. Then God allowed him to appear not to the general public, but to us whom God has chosen in advance to be his witnesses. We were those who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he ordered us to preach everywhere and to testify that Jesus is the one appointed by God to be the judge of all, the living and the dead. He is the one all the prophets testified about, saying that everyone who believes in him will have their sins forgiven through his name. This man was just preaching and preaching. Even as Peter was saying all these things, guess what happened? Verse 44, ha, he said, even as Peter was saying all these things, ha, 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 the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the message. Wow. Hey, hey, they were just listening to this man as he was just preaching to them. And the Holy Spirit fell upon all of them that we're listening to the message. Hi, do you see the importance of listening to messages? Do you see the importance of paying attention? It's not when they're preaching, you are doing something else. You are posting prayer requests. <laughs> it says, even as Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening. All who were listening. All who were listening. To the message. Do you know as you are even listening to me. This same Holy Spirit can fall upon all of you. Who are listening to the message. Chai. <laughs> Ore posikaya baba. Rate le kati kopa li hindi kondo so penti ala handa ha. Hebra ha kaso kondi ala hande posi a hande he. Ha! He said even as Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the message. The Jewish believers who came with Peter were amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles too. For they heard them speaking in other tongues and praising God. He did not pray and say, receive the Holy Ghost. Huh? He did not say, receive the gift of tongues. All he did was just preach. And suddenly, the Spirit of God took over. People started to speak in tongues. Just picture this thing. Just picture this thing. Just picture people. 40 people in the house listening to me preach. Just listening. I'm just telling them about Jesus. How they, they, they crucified him. How the, on the third day he rose up. How he, how he's just talking and talking and talking about the spirit. And boom. I see people. All of them. Holy Spirit. Not one of them. Not two of them. Not three of them. 30 of them. 40 of them. All speaking in tongues. Hey! And I haven't even prayed for them to receive it. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if somebody is getting ex excited, but it is making me excited. There's power in listening to the messages. God will know if they are paying attention and it's okay, it's time. Let them be filled now. It is time. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> Is somebody excited about this message? Because me, I'm excited right now. He said, even as Peter was saying these things, these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the message. The Jewish believers who came with Peter were amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles too. For they heard them speaking in other tongues and praising God. Wow. They heard them speaking in other tongues and praising God. All they did was listen to the message that he had. The power of listening to the messages. 
Some of you, you don't listen to the messages. Please, woman of God, I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Please, please, I am preaching. You are distracting me. Listen to the message. And the Holy Spirit will fall upon you. Now, I want everybody to pray in the Holy Ghost wherever you are. Those that have not received the gift, receive it right now in the name of Jesus. The gift of tongues, you will pray in the Holy Ghost. On the prayer line, I see a bunch of you are on here. Begin to pray. I will unmute you so you can pray. Make sure there's no noise in your background. I want you to pray like never before. You can even join us on the prayer line and pray. The number is on my page. Connect and let us pray in the Holy Ghost. Hey! Jesus se kolobo sia ta 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 rekebo si brada ran hontia brenta ya ko se kele katoya rate palande kele kete rekete la bo si papa pa rata ta ya baba rata ta ya baba hey rase pola da hando kondele bo sinte rate le kondele baba ba rekale ba se kele konte rekete le ba se kele kanta ikara baba Shit. Hey, Holy Spirit, fall upon everybody on this prayer line. <laughs> fall upon everybody on this audio right now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Receive new tongues wherever you are. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Yes, that's right. Pray. 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 That's right. Pray. Pray. Pray the Holy Ghost. Ha ha ha. Rate kete. Re kete basika. He pala sete. He kente le panti ala konte. He kele basika raba. Re kete le baba. Re kende le baba. Siya ne le baba. Ha ha ha. 
Yes, Lord. Be filled with the Holy Ghost wherever you are. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> oh, yes, Lord. We love you. The same thing that happened when Peter was preaching to them. The same thing is happening again now. <laughs> hey, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh yes Lord. Oh yes Lord. He le godo he come and see the le godo sia da 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 bo sia. He ba 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 ba. He de ke te ke te ke ke ke. O koro kon de de ba 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 ba. He ne de ke de ke de. O ro bo si de de ba ba si de de ba bo si da ya ba ba. He de 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 de. Ura da 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 bo sia da 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 bo sia. He de 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 bo sia ba 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 ba. Yande kando bo si de de kondo ro bo bo siente. Arakata ya ba 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 ba. Eke telega dora ba 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 ba. O kondo ro kondo ro kondo. Rasi kala ba ba. Eko ra kusu bali kande kosi leke te. Rakadi gaba se te de 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 de. O de de kande de kondo de ba si kala ba. Reke de 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 de. O ka 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 ya ka ya ka ya ka a ye ka ya ka ya ka ya ro kondo ro kondo ro go tonto e ke re ke te 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 ro koto ro bo siya ka e ke ke ka ra ti bo ro bo si ke re bo bo re ke te re ke te ra ka ba se te le bo se te ra te le ba 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 re ke le ba 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 i ra ne ke le ba 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 re ka ti ka to su pula ga di ka oh Jesus oh yes Lord we love you. Randele bosia ba ba ba, hira kada ya ba ba, hira kada ya ba ba. Hey yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord. Hira ba ba shete, hira gato ra ba ba. Rase kete kete kete, rakati kata kata kata, rakati kata kata kata. Onde la ba shete, ibra de ibra de ibra de ibra de. Ora ba 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 ba. Hey ya ba 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 ba. Hey, ya ba 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 ba. Hey, kele kete le kete. Oro konto ro konto. Are bandere 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 ba. Ondo rondo rondo rondo. Ibrase kele kete le kete. Rakati kata ya ba 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 ba. Ora ba 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 ba. Eke ke ke ka 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 ka. Re ke te ke te ke te. U koto robo si e ke te le ba ti ka da ba ba. I re ko to 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 ta 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 ta. Ro ko to 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 ba di ka ba ba. E ke de ba 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 ba. I re ko to robo si e ke le ba ba ba. E ke re ko ro ko ro ba ba ba. I re ge re ge re ge re ge. Ra se ke le ge de ge de. I ra da da ba ba ba. I re ge re ba 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 ba. I sa da ya ra da da. Ondo robo si ka da ba ba. I ke te ke te ke te. U ko na ba si ki la. Kan de ke ra di ka la. O ba si ke. Ke ke na do si ya ka da ya 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 ro ko ro bo si ya ka he 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 o ko ro ko ro ko ro ko i bre de bre de bro de bre si ke le ba si ya ya ba ba o ro tu da ya ba ba i ke se ke le ke le ke da bu si ya ka ba si ya ka do si ga da 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 o ni ga da ba ba siente u ko ro bo si ga ba ba ra ka ti ka ra ka i ke le ke te u ro pa ti ka ta ya ba si ka la kon de le ba si ke le ke le ga do bo si ya ka da re ne ka se ke le ke le ke u ko lo konto ra ke te 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 u ro konto ro konto re ke te ke te ke te o ko ro po si ka ba ba i ka di ka da ba ba i ka di ka da ba ba e ya ko se ke te ra ke re pa re ka te u ro konto ro bo se te abriga se konda ya ba ba i ka re ko se pa la 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 mo si ki ya ba ba e ke te ke te ke te u se ke te ke te ke te ra ka ti ka ta ka ta e ke te ke te ke 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 Uro dekre bra iko reka sekete ukata ya kata ekete keta kata iko tele kete kete uro po sekete le kete uro tonto ro tonto iran sekete le kete ore kaba baba shanda ire gonde de kada baba baba e ya 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 ora kata ya baba ire kontere baba sekete te ke 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 
Ora hekete ura baba shanta ikelebo siete rakati koto koto rakade kete kete rokoto rokoto ibrade koto brasi karababa rekete keke 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 oro koro koro koko 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 kaka 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 Oh rokoto robo siata da baba okoko kaka 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 okaka kaka 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 roto folika ba siata eke ke 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 ka 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 okoko kaka 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 Yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord oh yes Lord we thank you Lord we love you Lord just say thank you Jesus thank you Jesus my god i feel so good wow thank you Jesus thank you Jesus oh my god wow 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 Wow. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Wow. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God. Wow. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, yeah, yeah. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Oh my God. Ah. Oh my God. Oh yes Lord. Wow, how do you feel? I feel so good. <laughs> My God, tell us how you're feeling. It feels great. I feel good. Like there's a release or something. You know, like, I just feel great. My God. Hmm. I'm seeing some people that said testimonies. Let me read one of these testimonies. <laughs> Hallelujah. What is it? Good afternoon, man of God. God bless you. I have a testimony. After the three days fasting before your birthday, how many of you remember the three days fasting that we did on the week of my birthday? She said, I noticed that the big white cyst I had in my private part had disappeared. My God. Wow. She said, big white cyst in her private part area had disappeared within that three days fasting. Wow. She said, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I have been tapping into the healing prayers, drinking the water, washing with water since I started watching your videos, which just came on one day. My children and I have not been sick like we used to, not taking medications like we used to. I give God all the glory for everything he is doing for me and my family. I thank God for bringing you into my life. I have been blessed a lot in this ministry. Thank you, Jesus. More anointing to you. Wow. Wow. Now, this one, you guys, it may sound nasty, but you can imagine what this woman has been going through. You see how wicked the devil is? The devil is a bastard. He is so wicked. Ha. Putting things in places that will make people so uncomfortable, will make people suffer. See me whenever I mention a case, whenever I mention a case, I have to pray for somebody. 
There's somebody here that probably is going through the same thing. Maybe you're having a smelling discharge from your private area. Or maybe there's a moving object in your private area. Don't worry, you don't have to comment, but I'll pray for you. Or maybe there's something that is, yeah, something that is not right in that area. I prayed for a lady that had worms moving there. Worms. She was feeling movement of worms there. I prayed for someone that things that were coming out from there was smelling so bad. She was even ashamed to go out. It is the enemy. I want to pray for you guys. Somebody said they have itchiness. Ah, hallelujah. Somebody said they have itchiness there. I will pray for you. If you are one of these people that you are having something happening in your private area, whether you're a man or you're a woman, or even if you have gonorrhea, syphilis, herpes, any of those things, in your, don't be ashamed. Tap into this prayer. You don't have to comment. Don't worry. I don't want you to comment. It is a demon. And I want to cast that demon out so you can be healed. You cannot be living like that. Being uncomfortable. Suffering like that. Smelling like that. Being uncomfortable. That's not what God sent you here to do. Put your right hand on your forehead. <clears throat> I want to pray for you. You that is tapping into this prayer. That I am praying. Believe what I am praying. Believe and you will, you will be healed. Whether you are a man or a woman or a girl or a boy, or you are having something in your private area that is not supposed to be there. Or somebody you are here, you are having difficulty urinating. Anytime you urinate, it is hurting you. Put your right hand on your forehead. Let's cast out that spirit. Now, you will say, Jesus, deliver me. Say it seven times slowly while you have your hand on your forehead. Don't be ashamed. Just do this prayer. It is okay. Nobody is blaming you for anything. Say, Jesus, deliver me seven times. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, fire all over your body. Fire from your head to your toe. All of you that have your hand on your head, that is going through one thing or the other in your private area, fire all over your body. Fire in that private area. Fire, fire, fire. Angels, pump fire into that body right now. You demon that is causing stinking thing to come out or stinking discharge or worms moving around there or pain or all of this stupid diseases, gonorrhea, syphilis, whatever sickness. It's time for you to come out of that body. Out in the name of Jesus. Out in the name of Jesus. Out in the name of Jesus. Even you that have what's it called? Um, itchiness there. You spirit responsible for this. Out in the name of Jesus. That yeast infection. You that is going through that. That spirit of yeast infection. Out in the name of Jesus. Out in the name of Jesus, I rinse you with the blood of Jesus. Everything they have deposited in your private area, I command them to come out now. Out of your body. Come out in the name of Jesus. I command total healing right now. In the name of Jesus, you will no longer have problem urinating. You will no longer have that discharge, that stinking discharge coming out. You will no longer have that itchiness. You will no longer have those moving objects there. In the name of Jesus, you are free. You are healed. You are delivered in Jesus' name. As I have said it, so shall it be. Hallelujah. You will come back with testimonies in Jesus' name. Some of you will start to feel heat in that area, like fire in that area. <laughs> Some of you will start to feel fire in that area. Somebody said they have bladder infection. Be healed now. Anyone with bladder infection, be healed in the name of Jesus. That spirit has left you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Wow. I'm hearing stagnation. 
I hear it so clearly. Stagnation. How many of you are experiencing stagnation in your life? Like nothing is happening for you. You are not moving forward. You are just in one place. You just experience stagnation. I heard it so clearly. Stagnation. Ha! It's time to pray. Now get up and put your hand on your head. Most of the time, stagnation is caused by your spirit husband or spirit wife. And I'm going to cast out that spirit. And you will begin to move forward in life. Put your right hand on your forehead. I heard it clearly. I heard stagnation. Some of you, maybe your papers, you're trying to file for papers, but you're not going anywhere. You are still in the same spot for almost 10 years. Your paper has no head, no tail. That is stagnation. Some of you want to go to school, but you still have not registered. Some of you are looking for a job, no job up till now. Some of you want to marry. No, nothing, nothing. You're just stagnant. Nothing is going good for you. Stand up. Put your right hand on your forehead. I want to pray, but I'm hearing this song. In Jesus' name, every knee must bow. In Jesus' name, every knee must bow. I sing this song. Every knee must bow. In Jesus' name. As you are singing it, bounce around. Move around. In Jesus' name, every knee must bow. <laughs> hey, every knee must bow. In Jesus' name, every knee must bow. In Jesus' name, every knee must bow. In Jesus' name, every knee must bow. Ha! Rekete, every knee must bow. In Jesus' name, even your spirit of stagnation, you will bow. <laughs> In Jesus' name, every knee must bow. Ha ha ha! Hey, every knee must bow. Now you will say, Jesus. Deliver me. Say it seven times with your right hand on your forehead. Even if you're not sure if you're going through it, just tap into the prayer. Something may happen to you. You don't know. (laughs) Put your right hand on your forehead and say, Jesus, deliver me seven times slowly from your heart. Like somebody that is tired of this situation, that is sick and tired of being stagnant. (laughs) Jesus, deliver me. Jesus, deliver me seven times. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I want to pray for you. Stand up. Put your right hand on your head. Close your eyes. Don't try to be looking around. Close your eyes so you can be focused. Holy Ghost, fire all over your body. Fire from your head to your toe. Fire on your from your head to your toe. You spirit of stagnation, frustration, rejection, backwardness, spirit husband, spirit wife. <laughs> Out in the name of Jesus. Ah, to the name of Jesus, fire all over your body. Fire from your head to your toe. Fire, more fire, more fire, more fire, more fire, more fire. Come out of that body. I say, come out of that body. Pack your things and go. Out in the name of Jesus. Out in the name of Jesus. (laughs) Wherever you tie them to a spot so they don't move, I cut that rope. I cut that chain. I free them. In the name of Jesus, if you put them in a dark place, I bring them out of that dark place to the light. I bring them out in the name of Jesus. I declare you free in the name of Jesus. From today, you will no longer be stagnant. Things will begin to work out for you. And I command all your destinies to be restored in the name of Jesus. Starting from now, Things will begin to change. Not tomorrow. Hey, hey, hey. See, God says, I just need to speak the word and so shall it be. I say, starting from now, things will begin to work out for you. Where they have rejected you, they will call you, begging you to come there. If if they have rejected you at a place you really want to work, they will call you and say, oh, we made a mistake. Sorry, ma'am, you can come. We want to hire you. In the name of Jesus, everything that they've stolen from you is restored. Go and shine. Go and move forward in life. Go and be successful. In the name of Jesus, you are free. Hallelujah. Wow. My God. Yes, that's right. Somebody said, I am free. Wow. Wow. How do you feel? I feel... <laughs> I feel so weak now. 
Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> oh my god I feel so weak I feel like something came out of me all the virtue left wow I'm really enjoying this fast though somebody said I'm yawning somebody said I pass a big gas wow I'm praying and suddenly you just did boo a big fart just came out of you what do you think happened <laughs> Something ran out of you. <laughs> Michelle said, I felt something left me and I am so hot. Wow. Tell us how you are feeling. Wow. Wow. She said, something left me. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Wow. Hallelujah. I see a lot of people yawning, yawning, feeling weak. Wow. Wow. Sweating. Feeling tired. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. My God. Oh, Jesus. This fasting, God said you will receive a lot. Somebody said, I just ran to the bathroom. <laughs> Somebody said, she's burping nonstop. Wow. Wow. Look at that. Are you reading the comment? Somebody said, they're yawning so deep. Wow. I heard it, spirit of stagnation. I heard it clearly, stagnation. Stagnation. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. My God. I feel so weak suddenly. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you, Father. So this is now, um, the next time we come back in the next four hours, it will be the end of day one. That's six o'clock. And this fasting, you can actually eat after the six o'clock prayer line. So it's not a dry fast where you don't eat for three days. But if you want to go ahead and make it dry, feel free to do it. You don't have to eat. But God did not instruct me to make it dry. So when we come back in four hours and we pray, it will be end of day one. And we'll have two more days to go. I did post the scriptures that you should read. Even the ones that I've been reading, I'm adding them to update it. Like today, I read the book of Acts, the story I, I, I preached. I think that was Acts chapter 10. I put it already. I will post it later and update it. And then I also uh, read study to show thyself approved, which is 2 Timothy 2.15. So as I'm reading scriptures, as we are going, I'm adding it to the list for you guys. So you can go back and read it on your own. And maybe God will explain it better to you. God bless all of you. Make sure you send your offering for the fast. And just a quick update for people in Minnesota. I will be coming to Minnesota for deliverance and healing program. For deliverance and healing program in um, November. November 3rd is a Saturday. And November 4th is a Sunday. Because I know Minnesota is a lot of people, so I want to do three, um, two days. So it will be Saturday, November 3rd and 4th. And God instructed me that the people there will sponsor it. So far we've had close to, I think we've had close to, how much do we have now? Where is Wesu? Um, last time I checked, I think it was about 3000 or something. I'm not sure. People have been donating or contributing towards it some people somebody gave 900 somebody gave 500 somebody gave another person gave 500 then 200 and the ones that are contributing were so we created a private group so we have them in there and we are updating them as the money is adding up so that they can all be part of the planning committee the, from that list we will have people that will be workers i'm actually going to do um <clears throat> a t-shirt for you guys let's hope the money that you guys put together is enough because it's two days so the venue will be two days price <clears throat> the venues are not are not very cheap the one i used last time where sue is going to check with them today that was cheap because that was a community center right that was cheap but everywhere else hotels are like in thousands five thousand ten thousand but that community center I used, I think it was Brooklyn Park or something center. Last time I came, it was like $800 and it sat like four to 500 people, I think. So if we're able to get it this time, it will save us a lot. 
Or if you live in Minnesota and you find a good venue, let us know that it's affordable because one of the reasons why we're not able to come everywhere is because these things are not cheap, especially the venues. The more people, the more expensive. So if you know a cheap place, let me know and we can use it. But so far, Wesu has gone to check with them again. I know they said they were booked throughout October, but I'm hoping they will have openings for November. It's cheaper than the normal places. We just want to come and deliver and heal people as the Spirit is leading us. I'm coming with my cousin, Pastor Isaac Samuel II. I'm actually going to be in New York with Pastor Isaac for his program that is happening on the 27th of this month, which is um, about 18 days away. Wow. It's almost time. More. <laughs> in 18 days, I will be in New York for It's Time for a Miracle Pastor Isaac is the one doing it, and he's inviting me. I love when they do it and invite me. I don't have to worry about anything. I just go, and I just relax and enjoy. You know, what? when I'm the one putting it together, I just have my mind all over the place, but it is well. So Pastor will be traveling with me to a lot of the places I will be going for deliverance and healing because he's available right now. So it's good that way, even if it's a lot of people, it will be easy for us to lay hands and heal people and deliver people. He's also very anointed. I love him so much. Um, I love him so much. The man is humble, he's wise, he's anointed. He's just a good man. You understand? His wife is so blessed. I love them, all of them, even his children. I love them too. So we're going to be coming to Minnesota 3rd and 4th. And then I will put a date for the next place. The next place that has a lot of people willing to contribute is Philadelphia. So I'm going to decide on the date for that. It may be the following week. I'm not sure yet. And then I'll look on the list to see how much more we've gathered in other places. As the list is going higher with more contribution, possibility of coming to that place. You understand? Because that way we'll be able to cover the cost and I don't have to spend any money. All right. God bless all of you. If you want to be a part of it, um, you have my PayPal is on my page. You can even go to Princess Belemzi um, Ministries um, on Facebook, my ministry page. You'll see where it says donate. It takes you straight to my PayPal page or even on my page right now. You'll see my PayPal. Or if you cash up, just type the number sign, the dollar sign and type Princess Belemzi. One word combined, dollar sign, princess, Belemzi is B-E-L-E-M-Z-Y. You will see me and you can cash up it, but you will, you will save the screenshot and you will post it in that thing or maybe send it to Wesu. This is only Minnesota. We're not collecting donations for any other place because we have not announced. Only for people in Because if you keep sending money, it will be confusing me. Let's focus on one person. And then we have a budget for each of these places. And we are praying that we'll get enough to cover the budget. It is going to work out. And a lot of people will be saved. A lot of people will be delivered. A lot of people will be healed. I'm, I'm actually excited. I'm very excited because, see, whenever I go somewhere, somebody's life is changing. Because we don't go there to play. We're going there to do something, to work. And we're not going alone. We're going with Jesus. We're going with the Holy Spirit. We're going with God. So if you have family in Minnesota, get them ready. We're still getting, looking for venue, but the date is fixed. Um, God specifically told me to come to Minnesota. He said they need del deliverance there. So that's the first place I'm going to. Gather your family members that are not feeling well, that are that are sick, that, that need to love God, that needs deliver. Just gather them. You know, sometimes it's hard for you to travel with them to Houston but now we are coming to you. So God, if you have 20 people in your family, no problem. Bring all of them. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. <laughs> Bring all of them. Somebody say, what about London, woman of God? Well, um, let us see what you guys can do now. You know, that's another country. Everything has to be taken care of. The flight ticket is in thousands of dollars. You know, let us see if you guys are able to come up for London. We might need over ten, over ten thousand. 
Everywhere we need close to 10,000 or more. If you want me to do a program two days in your place, meaning the expenses will be times two, not for the tickets or whatever, but the hall and all that. If it's only enough money to do for one day, so shall it be. We do one day and the next day we're out of that place. Like Minnesota, we have two days. We have a lot of people watching me in Minnesota. And most of them have been watching me since last year. Some of them were even in my program that just happened last week. I have a lot of my followers in that place. Most of the Liberian girls that watch me, they live there. I told you I have a lot of Liberian followers. Some people even think I'm from Liberia. <laughs> Nobody was telling me. He said, I thought you were from Liberia. I said, well, maybe now I'm from Liberia. Who knows? <laughs> Most of my followers are from Liberia. I'm even beginning to understand you guys, your accent. Yeah, 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 don't do yeah. I want to be speaking like you guys. <laughs> Some of them can speak so fast. I'm even with Sue. Well, so that works with me. I say, Madam, slow down, slow down. I'm not understanding what you're saying. In my program, when they gave her the mic to talk on behalf of those that contributed, I was waiting to see if she would be rushing, but she did so well. She talked so slowly. We love you. We really appreciate. I say, good. Now I understand what you're saying. I thought she was gonna say, "Eh, y'all wear that, y'all wear that." You know, you do it with Sue sometimes. She's laughing. She knows what she does. Sometimes I'll be so lost. I say, "Madam, come again, come again." <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> oh my God! God bless. I love you. Don't worry. We are coming. Somebody even wants me to come to Liberia. How many of you want me to go to Liberia? But you guys are not even in Liberia. You guys are here. But you want me to go to Liberia? They have been messaging me. Pastors from Liberia have been messaging me. People have been messaging me. Please come to Liberia. Come to Liberia. I said, no problem. It will happen. How many of you want to see me in Liberia? If you're in America and I'm going to Liberia, are you going to come? Or you're just going to send your people? You need to come with me now. If not, eh? If not, y'all, y'all, y'all going to be, y'all going to be, y'all, y'all. I like that y'all thing you guys do that. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. Somebody said, even here in South Africa, we will welcome you. Do I have a lot of people watching in South Africa? I don't I don't know. Yeah. I didn't think I had a lot of followers there. But let's see how it goes. Don't worry. We'll go to all these places as the spirit is leading us. Somebody said, Woman of God, go to Sierra Leone. He didn't say come to Sierra Leone. He said go. Meaning you yourself, you are not there. <laughs> he said go there. Meaning you yourself, you are not even in Sierra Leone. You want me to go. He would have said come to Sierra Leone. We will welcome you there. So I will know that you that is inviting me, you are there. But the way you said it, she said, okay. She said, I will follow you. All right, no problem. No problem. You guys will be traveling a lot. What of Dubai? <laughs> Somebody say, woman of God, please don't forget Dubai. Dubai, how many of you want to go to Dubai? Dubai will be fun, no? We'll go shopping. We'll go and shop and shop and shop and shop. You know, I like those long dresses. I will buy a lot, eh? I told the woman that supplies me the dresses. I say, guess what? I'm going to Dubai soon, and I'm going to buy a lot. She said, uh-oh, woman, uh, princess, please, oh, don't, 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 don't fire me. I said, no, 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 sweetie, but I want to go to the source. And see some things for myself. Somebody says she will follow me. Princess Tube says she will follow me to Dubai. <laughs> Jemima, see, you guys like Dubai. Eh? How many of you have even been there before, sir? I've heard some nice things about that place. You know, don't worry. We'll go there before the end of this year. I'll find a date to fix the date. Let me see if the Dubai folks are able to come up with something. We just need a nice venue. We need sound. We need um, a keyboardist. Possibly a drama, so we can do some praise, but not necessarily. We don't have to have it. And then we need my ticket for Dubai. I think I'm the only one that will be coming there for now. And let's see. And then hotel room. Yeah, and that will be fine. So Dubai folks, y'all get together. Y'all, y'all need to get together. Y'all need to get together and do what you gotta do. Uh, exactly. I said Dubai will be fun. 
We may even spend one week there. Just have make it like a vacation, Holy Ghost vacation. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. It will be so much fun, and all of us will go shopping together. That will be nice. So, no worry, we'll plan it. We'll have fun. This ministry, I want us to be having fun. I told you guys, let us go and do boat cruise. You guys refuse. You say when I when you start praying for marine spirit and the boat start to shake. Woman of God, ah, I don't know. That's I don't know if I can do the CEO. We are supposed to go on a boat cruise, Princess Belemzi Ministries. We'll rent out a boat only for our members. Hey, fire. Holy Ghost, fire. Marine Spirit, fire. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> no, say, woman of God, let the sleeping dog lie. <laughs> Don't be praying this kind of prayer here, please. <laughs> when the bones shake a little bit, they say, "I should not have come." Oh, hey, I don't know why I came to this place. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want us to go and have fun. You all, you all don't want us to go have fun. <laughs> Somebody say, I'll watch your life. You see? You don't have faith. Fear, fear people. <laughs> I, uh, it, both cruise was fun. The last one I went to, it was so much fun and they had so much food. How many of you have been on a boat cruise? It has so much food, buffet, food, food, food. Food. They have so many things to do. They even have an um, like a, a like a theater where you can all gather together and do meetings or whatever. It, it's 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 gonna be nice. I'm still gonna pray more about it because I've even seen on TBN some of these pastors come together. I think they did a boat cruise and they went to is it Israel or Jerusalem? They went somewhere. It was nice. So we're gonna try to organize ours too, so we can travel. Even the Bahamas, I'm planning to go to the Bahamas one of this time. I've been there before. It's not even far from Houston. I think it was a four hours flight. I went to the Atlantis Resort. So the Atlantis Resort is nice. They have a lot of fun stuff to do. We we'll plan that. I like stuff like that. I like us to have fun. So you and your families can come out together. You can bring your children. They too can have fun. Ministry is supposed to be fun. Not just only you every time. There's some time we should have fun. Like this last three days, the children had fun, especially when they were dancing. They even got some money. They took pictures. They look nice. By the way, the pictures should be ready. I will post the, um, the link for the pictures. They're actually ready but i haven't released the link let me see ah. okay well sue is giving me update for minnesota she said for november 3rd they only have a smaller room available for 250 people and that's for 850 dollars wow why is it so expensive and then the bigger room we used the last time is available on November 4th at $650. Not bad. So are you guys hearing, for those of you in Minnesota, where Sue has checked with the Brooklyn Park people, and they say they only have a size for 250 people on Saturday, and that's for $850. $850. I think we're going to take it. We'll work with it. Whoever cannot fit Saturday, they'll come Sunday. Well, so I think that's a good deal. So venue will only cost us a total of maybe like sixteen hundred or fifteen hundred. That's a cheap one, a good deal. Two fifty people, it will be a struggle because last time I was in Minnesota, there was almost five hundred people. But that's the only other places. If you even call the hotels yourself, they will tell you five thousand, ten thousand. <laughs> for only 400 500 people it's expensive what do you guys think should we take it all my planners in minnesota what you guys think should we take the 250 capacity for saturday and then the one that we used last time for sunday because it's two days now so 
anybody that cannot fit on the first day, I guess they will come back the next day. Well, we're going to see what we'll do. But I was just giving you guys an update. She just sent me um, the message. Jomaya say yes, we can do small on Saturday and big group on Sunday. Okay, all right. No problem. We're going to work on that. We should take it because if you go around looking for prices, even churches, all of them are expensive. They are all charging thousands of dollars. So let us try to spend our money wisely. Okay? God bless all of you. I'm going to let you guys go. Go to that post if you want me to come to where you are. Put the amount that you are willing to contribute towards the program in your area. And the ladies will add it up. And then we'll decide when we're coming to your place. I'll see you guys back in four hours. And we'll break the fast for day one. Read the scriptures. Stay holy. Love God. It is well with you. I love you guys. All right. Bye-bye.